Hey, folks, welcome back to the Living in the Virtue of Your Strengths podcast. My name is Matt Engel. I'm a certified Catholic coach with Metanoia Catholic, but also a certified Gallup Strengths Finder coach through Gallup. And on this call, we look at how to live our Clifton Strengths virtuously. There's a lot of different podcasts that tell you how to live and name, tame, or name, claim, and aim your strengths. Here we talk about taming our strengths. We do that by looking at John Paul II's personalism, also our Catholic anthropology, but we reflect on scripture as well to inform our conversation. All right. So here we're going to be focusing on the talent of includer. And from the straw poll at the beginning, the people that are on the live call with me right now, not a lot of includers in the group. <laughs> a lot of, I don't want to say where there's a lot of excluders in the group, but there's just not a lot of people that are high in this talent of includer. But Includer is one of those interesting talents. We're going to dig into it a little bit more because some people are surprised not to see it higher. They're like, well, I, I think I'm really good at including people. Well, just like a lot of the strengths can do, sometimes the different combinations of strengths that we have adjacent to one another can start to mimic other talents. But we want to talk about how what makes Includer distinct. All right. So we're going to jump into that. We're going to find out what motivates Includer uh, but then we're going to guide our conversation over to the virtue, how to live it out virtuously so that we can live out our best contribution in this includer strength and become uh, great saints in the process and building up the kingdom of God. Okay, so main focus, includer, what drives a person with includer, where does it show up virtuously or viciously, and then finally, what are the mindsets that are driving those vicious or virtuous ways that this talent can show up? Okay. We're going to turn to our baseball card, which you get right from Gallup. Uh, and uh, here's what we've got. So basic overview of Includer. So listen, in every word, this is one of the things I realized that with Gallup, they, they choose every word very intentionally, All right? So sometimes there's this one or strengths can look very similar, but there's just a couple of words that kind of separate them, okay? So pay attention to the words here, Um and understand not what you think Includer is, but what Gallup is saying Includer is. Okay. All right. So first of all, I am. The Includer is being. How are they being? I am aware of exclusion and understand its repercussions. I will. What are they doing? I will shrink the gap between haves and have-nots. I bring. What's their contribution? I bring a high level of tolerance with an, with an acceptance of diversity, with an acceptance of diversity. I'll say that again. I bring a high level of tolerance with an acceptance of diversity. I need, what's a requirement? Room for everyone. I love, what are the things that they value? I love assimilation and integration. I hate, again, what are the things that they value? I hate clicks. The metaphor image that we have, they have the model of all are welcome here. And then finally, the barrier label is indiscriminate. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do now after that little high level overview, let's dive in a little bit deeper. So I always like shifting over to a word picture. So if you're watching on YouTube, you can kind of follow along here. But if not, I'll, I'll explain what I've got. So we're asking the question, what drives the person with includer? Okay, so the first image I have, most people will recognize this wonderful woman. It's Saint Mother Teresa. And I included her on here because she just had the ability to see the inherent dignity of all people. Include her. Yes, they recognize differences, but they don't really focus on differences, right? I can find often that my connectedness will like to identify differences so that I can see complementarity. Okay, because I enjoy complementarity so well and the fruits that come through the complementarity and, and, and uh, the differences that are there. Include, but Includer might even, I don't know, this is me, Includer might look at that and say, well, that's a little bit utilitarian. So you're still looking at the person based on their ability to be a complement to something else. Okay. Includer just says, everybody's got this inherent dignity. And I see it, right? That's why I got a pair of eyeballs on here. They're, they see the inherent dignity of the person and they want others to see the inherent dignity of other people. So they see more in the commonalities that we share, that common dignity. And so therefore, there's a lot of openness to receiving what other people have to offer based on that common dignity that we share. Okay, so I've got an open gate here. Uh, I've also got an image of the Statue of Liberty. 
Right. And Justin, thank you so much for grabbing that quote for me. I'm going to pull that up. Set your liberty says, give me your, give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Okay. If that is not the mantra of includer, I can't imagine one uh, better than that. Okay. I also have an image of Christ and he's at, uh, it's a, it's a painting that's depicting Jesus sitting amongst the tax collectors and the prostitutes after the call of Matthew. And then the Pharisees are at the door and saying, why are you including these people? Why, why are you sitting at the table with these people? All right. And what does Jesus say? I, I came not to call sinner uh, righteous, but the sinners. Okay. So that's everybody. Everybody's included in that category of sinners, right? <laughs> so uh, we can, we can uh, take joy in knowing by the nature of us being sinners, right? Uh, that we are called by Christ, right? Uh, also, we share that dignity. He sees the dignity of all the people in the room, not doesn't define them by their sins. Uh, includer is, is going to be very wary to judge other people. So likely very good at just holding the space, suspending judgment. Why? Because they're not looking for the bad. They're looking at the dignity. They're looking for the good. They're looking at uh, at the true core of the person. And goodness gracious, isn't, isn't that a valuable thing to see um, and for, to have happen in our culture? Okay. And then finally, I have an image of uh, St. Peter's Square in the Vatican. And I love this because there is the, the arches that go around kind of in this mother church, almost like it's, it's the arms of mother church that are extending forth from the actual St. Peter's Basilica, and it's, it's like giving a big hug, right? And open arms, receiving all, all into the church. And if you've ever been to St. Peter's Square, all walks of life, all ethnics, it's just filled with pilgrims from all over the world, race, color, creed, age, um, diverse abilities, the whole thing, they're all there. And there's something that's incredible about being a part of this church that is so inclusive though it's often seen as being the opposite, which I think is quite ironic here. But anyways, I'm going to pause here. We can talk more about that, but we can pause here. What is landing? Because I know we're not really high in includer uh, on today's call. Teresa, you're, you're top in the charts, charts at 13, so feel free to jump in here. But I, I want to know what is landing about this, what's resonating, uh, what's not really resonating, what might we add to enhance this word picture that we have, or somebody perhaps that's high in includer or knows somebody that's high in includer. Um, how do you see this showing up to help the listeners on the call today better understand what drives a person with includer? Jane, you're at number 15. So you're a close second to Teresa. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just have to share with you, Mother Teresa is the epitome of includer. Uh, I experienced, I just want to share a little story. I experienced in 1995, I think she went to the prayer, the national prayer breakfast with the Clintons in 94, and she was wanting to start open a, a, a mother um, a home for unwed mothers and their babies with her with her sisters in Washington, D.C. And she because she included everybody, she was sitting with Mrs. Clinton, who is like, you know, so pro-choice or whatever. And she included, and she got her on board on this. And I was, I was blessed to experience the opening of that, of that um, center of that uh, home for unwed mothers. And Mrs. Clinton was there and mother Teresa was there. And it just, you know, that was back in 94, five. So, you know, this is over, you know, 25 years ago, it just gave me that, um, amazing perspective of what mother Teresa could do. She had a mission and she didn't really care who was going to join her team, you know, like you're going to help. And, um, cause she was, ap apparently the rest of the story was like, she was having some issues of like, um, policies or, you know, um, the, the, the red tape of getting this organized and mm. Mrs. Clinton just like made it happen. And it was just mm. such an amazing, and I just remember being there specific, I mean, witnessing this and thinking to myself, because of course to myself, I'd be like, Oh my goodness, I would never have Mrs. Clinton on my team, but it did. So it gets, you know, it was just like this two dichotomies of like, wait, these two thought processes, these two thought influencers 
you know, and yet they were able to join the team together for this common purpose. And I think that is what Includer does, is that sometimes it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to include the tax collectors and the prostitutes. And yet that's what Jesus did. And so mm -hmm. I think that's the gift of Includer is because the rest of the world, you know, like you said, they, we want to, we want to categorize people or, or, you know, and, and like in my case, I was like, what the heck, Mrs. Clinton and mother Teresa joining forces. Like this is like, you know, Darth Vader and whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, anyway, I just, she's the epitome. So thank you for including, including her on this picture. Yes. She was very easy to include. I, I recall hearing, maybe some of you guys have heard this, this interview that she gave. I, I can't cite the actual interview, but uh, she was being interviewed and um, this uh, the, the interview was talking about this guy talking about, uh, you know, people, same sex attraction. So he kept referring to uh, you know, every you bring him up, you say homosexual people, gay people, stuff like that. And he was using that vernacular. And and she paused the interview and she said. It's interesting you use those words. What I would like to do for the rest of the interview, instead of just saying homosexual people or gay people. I would like to you, you to use the word friends of Jesus, friends of Jesus. And so it gave this, this, uh, it gave this image of just how she sees people with this common dignity. She didn't see the differences. She didn't see the, she didn't like categorize people by their preferences or sins or anything like that. There, there was judgments suspended. It wasn't her place. She just left it at, I see people as friends of Jesus, and there was great dignity that she brought to the conversation with that. Suzanne. You know, I'm just fascinated <clears throat> with the thought that Includer is only one aspect of, of our whole personalities that God created, and some people being much higher in Includer and other people being much lower that that those are both really positive things that we can't all be high and include her or i don't know maybe nothing would get done we just all include each other but just the whole idea because our society right now in this particular part of history we have such an emphasis emphasis on inclusion that that isn't necessarily our highest good and my, my thought goes to all the aspects of the way our body keeps us healthy and how some cells probably are high in inclusion. Other cells are high in uh, not including <laughs> like white blood cells and red blood cells. And so I, if you can follow my train of thought, this call is making me question the value that right now in history we're putting on inclusion, even though inclusion clearly is a good and mm -hmm. really happy Mother Teresa was very high in it. Right, right. And so it's in, in our time of the, you know, the diversity, equality uh, interventions and, and, and a lot of the special interest groups that you see and, and a lot of the politiz politicization of, of a lot of these special interest groups. It's like, okay, well, it, we, we could look at this and we might say that, all right, there's, there's great focus on inclusion and making sure that everybody has a seat at the table. Maybe you've heard that language before. And the question is, um, are we going deep enough, right? Are we going deep enough or are we, because what Includer does well is it sees the inherent value of the person, okay? And if we, if we, if we set the value at the person based, you know, if we don't go deep enough, I think we can end up celebrating some things that are, that it's, it's almost like a false spirit of inclusion that's there. And it turns into a little bit more of a usury. We're going to talk a little bit more about that when we get into our, uh, our discussion on vice and virtue, but here back to this where, with what drives the person with includer, what might we add to this picture uh, before we start talking about the motivation or, or trying to answer this question here. Justin, do you have any thoughts? I know you're, you're often a contributor on this. Uh, it's in your bottom five. It's also right, my bottom five is there as well. But I'm curious uh, if you have anything to add on this one. No, and I mean, I think in general, the the concept of, 
open arms. I mean, uh, another image, I, I guess, along the lines of Mother Teresa is just what we all imagine a mother to be. You know, that no matter, or a parent in general, no matter what their child has done, no matter how they messed up, no matter what it is, in the end, we all want to be that one that can say, you know, you're always welcome home. Mm -hmm. You're always welcome here. Um, and, you know, I it, it's interesting because I think uh, most people would, you know, should we ultimately be able to include everyone in what we do? And, and is that what the church is called for? And I think everyone would, would answer yes at it. And I think what's interesting is that a lot of us, me, myself included, have to kind of come to that conclusion. Whereas someone with includer knows that truth as a starting point. Like this is, this is non-negotiable. I mean, when you, when you do things that exclude people, there is a price to pay, um, no matter what you see the benefit being. And I think a lot of other themes, even a lot of other relationship building things, like I'm high and relater, which tends to be very much opposite in its posture, is that I, I want to include you, but I need reasons to include you. I need it to be safe. I need it to forward a relationship. I need to be able to trust you first. Um, in the end, I know that every time I throw up that barrier, there is a price to pay. Now, maybe the good I see at the moment justifies them in my mind, and maybe to a third third party that that is a valid justification. But every time I make a decision in a moment to not include anyone, someone, I don't naturally see the the consequence of that, where with someone includer really sees it. Um, so you, you imagine, you know, we talked about deliberative before, where a deliberative person automatically sees the risk in everything. Mm -hmm. I think for someone like yeah. includer, they automatically see the risk of not including someone, of when you push someone away, when you're not willing to entertain what someone has to say. Um, you know, what is that consequence? And, and yeah, I, and I think we all ultimately get to where the includer sees. Um, it, sometimes it just takes longer for us because we have sometimes perfectly valid reasons to take our time in that approach. Includer okay. doesn't. Includer is going to go with it and then, you know, we'll deal with the consequences as they may. Right, um, right. Uh, thank you. Know, thank you, Justin. I, I think there's, there's, the person that's hiring an includer, they are going to see the consequences of, of not necessarily of not including somebody. And they're going to be very aware of those things, perhaps more so than people that are, are very mission focused and something that that Cindy shared here she says, I think it depends, you know, uh, I think it depends on how we how we uh, define the word inclusion, we still have to operate within the con uh, confines of who God calls us to be, and his original plan from the beginning. <laughs> Uh, I don't think it's the same way the world uses the word inclusion here today. So it's, yeah, there's what I, what I take that and maybe I don't want to put words in your mouth, Cindy. So if you want to, uh, if you want to jump in here and clarify, but I, I, as I was going through this, it, like we're, we're discussing how does inclusion uh, show up virtuously? I think if we, if we make inclusion in an end in and of itself, then it starts to get a little bit self-serving. Right. And the same thing of all these strengths, if they need to be subordinate to some higher mission and serving something, not just in serving, not not serving just the end of inclusion. Inclusion is not an end. It may feel like an end for people that are high in inclusion. But we look at it logically, it's still it's still a means to an end. The fact that the includer desires to achieve that end so much and, and drives towards that end is a benefit to the rest of us that we don't necessarily drive that. So it needs to have an advocate that's out there saying, no, like we, we need to recognize like mother Teresa did. She was such an advocate for the dignity of the human person. She just saw the dignity of people and it informed the way that she acted even to the point where you have somebody that seems like they're on polar opposites in terms of the value uh, spectrum, which we might put, you know, not knowing her heart, but might put Hillary Clinton over there. And they can still find commonality that's there. 
Uh, Teresa, I see your hands up. And then uh, Joan, if you want to add something here before we jump forward. Teresa, go ahead. Um, you know, I, I was thinking about it, and especially with Course Christ and Mother Teresa, I think the whole thing is it's based on truth. It's based on the truth of our Lord. And we can include people because they are people. And because no matter if it's, you know, the bum on the side of the road or it's the president of the United States, just because they're people, they deserve to be treated with respect and dignity. And, uh, you know, I, I remember hearing you were talking about Mother Teresa, you know, they're friends of Christ, whatever, but it still comes down to hate the sin, love the sinner. We're all sinners. Mm. And just because we accept people doesn't mean we condone their behavior, their sin, whatever, as just as they shouldn't for us. Yeah, but I we, think the includer is really good at being able to separate sin from sinner, right? And yeah. and like and see the person really well, which is why I got the eyes here. They they just are are really good at seeing down to the depths of the person, right? right. And they see below just kind of, you know shallow distinctions between between persons right they're they're going down they're saying okay the the value of the person is not in skin color it's not in ethnicity it's not in sex it goes down far deeper than some of those accidents or those attributes of personhood it goes deeper right let's go down there and let's have the conversation there otherwise we end up celebrating these things that just they're they're really not really worth i mean yeah, they're not, they're really not worth celebrating, at least compared to the depths of the human person. Which that's that's something that's far more worthy of celebration. Let's right. push forward here and and talk about the the motivation. And this has been talking a lot about dignity. I, I think this is where where includer is, is seeking to land to see and know the dignity of others, and let that dignity be known as well. How does this land with you guys? I, I just think I think they're so good. It's not like they don't see the differences. They see the person the same way that Jesus said, like, I don't see the sin of all these people. Like, I see it, but like, I'm not choosing to focus on it as if it's the 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 most important aspect. Of I, I, I can see that they come from a different part of the world. I can see that they're a different color. I can see that they're a different sex. I just... I can see those things, but it's not the depths of the person. There's so much more to see. And I think again, Psalm 139, that you've fashioned me in, in the depths, right? We talked about that a lot on the, on the relator. Relator is another one of those relationships that really likes to see people, right? It's funny. They, they say, see people by really focusing and going deeper. Includer sees people by, by, by bringing more people in, by gathering, right? And so you can kind of see a difference between relator and includer both are seeing talents right but one sees by going deep relator one sees by going broad includer okay how's this land in you guys the motivation of includer to see and know the dignity of others jane how's it hitting you justin jane and justin yeah I, you know it just it this is spot on, spot on, Matt. Thank you so much for that. And it just, St. John Paul II is just coming up so much for me just because of the personalism. Um, and also, you know, World Youth Day is coming up soon in the summer. And that that was his baby. And that was kind of almost revolutionary in the fact that that's what if you if you speak to someone that was actually at the very first World Youth Day, that was like their conversion is that they felt seen. They mm. felt, you know, the young person felt seen. I mean, even Life Teen, that's how Life Teen was started is that the young people weren't felt seen in the church and the dignity of them. So I think that this is right on the dignity of the human person. And um, yeah, and and we you're right. You're so right about like the all of this inclusion stuff is just surface level stuff. Let's get deep into it, which is what I think Metanoia Catholic is so gifted in the fact that again, because we're 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 going back to the anthropology of of the human person and understanding the human person, the dignity of 
the dignity of someone's thoughts, the dignity of someone's emotions. I mean, that is huge. Yeah, that the is sacredness huge. of that interior life yes, that's there. Let's let's properly reverence that. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, the, the the DEI movement, we can have a lot of thoughts of it, but we can throw the baby out in the bathwater when all of a sudden we just say, hey, you know what? This it, even to the point where diversity becomes a word that's that's triggering for for people on the right or or depend or in you know more conservative circles. I mean, goodness gracious! Like go to go to Psalm one thirty nine. All right, it it celebrates diversity. It celebrates the depths to which God has fashioned each individual person. Let's just take it deeper, right? Let's build upon it and let's just take it deeper. Let's go deeper with it. It's we don't we don't we don't we don't triumph by shutting down those movements. We 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 take what they've started and we bring them to completion. This is where I loved Christopher West. He always talks about John Paul II bringing to completion the revolution against you know uh, against the body that was started, or the revolution against the body trying to bring the body out that was started by Hugh Hefner, right? Started Playboy magazine, right? He wanted to celebrate the body because. A puritanical culture had really repressed the body and made the body as something that was bad. And he's saying, no, like the body is something that is good. Let's celebrate it. However, he just never went deep enough. John Paul II, though, with his love and responsibility and his theology of the body said, yeah, let, let's take a look at it. Let's take a look at the body, but let's really go deep. Let's look at it in its fullness. And that's why he would say pornography. It's not the problem that it shows too much. It shows too little. All right. We can say the same thing I could say from the DEI movements that are common today. It's not that they're celebrating too much or too little or too much. They're celebrating too little uh, at the, at this moment in time, Justin, what do you got? I was going to say just a, a slight change on this in my mind. It's, it's not just to see for, for me, for included, it's not just them seeing and knowing it's, it's really more of they champion the dignity of others. Mm. I mean, they're interested in, having that relationship that is you based on you, um, you know, and how well they do that is obviously how talent, you know, the, the as they move this from talent to strength, I, I, I think you're right, is that they, they begin to be able to open the aperture more and not just see someone as a collection of attributes. But, you know, they, they start with, there is a person in front of me, there's something about them that's being excluded and that's not right. Um, I'm going to fix that. Mm. Um, and I, I think, you know, we talk about the, uh, that quote from again, John Paul II, where you know, man cannot know himself unless he is a, a gift of, is able to make a gift of himself. Well, if someone's not able to make a gift of themselves, then the whole process is stopped before it starts. And so someone with includer I think innately knows that this person is a gift. We need to allow them to express it. Yeah, I'm, I'm Whoever starting this to, person is. regardless, regardless, I, I, I'm starting to kind of, I, I recently have, I, I've experienced two, two includers. One of them is, her name is Sarah. She's going through our coach training program. She's like includer number six. And I was just like, wow, she, she just like, when you get around her, you just actually feel good at the end of it, like you feel like somebody has been there celebrating you and what's going on. There's this interest, there's this focus. There's just like, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Like she's just, she just like, she's such a fan, right. Of the person that's in front of her. I think also Megan Mohan, she's one of our coaches. If anybody's been around Megan, like you just want to sit there at Megan. She just feel so affirmed when it's done. Like she just, she'll see and she'll, she's high communication as well. And so she will voice all, all the delight that she has and being around being around the people that she's around. And you just want to be around these people. I remember like the fact that Mother Teresa and John Paul II were would hang out with the Clintons, but they would also like be invited by, you know, Castro to Cuba, where it's like it's the worst thing it could, a communist com country could do is invite those two <laughs> to show up. It certainly didn't last long in Poland, but it's just like you just can't help it. We like these people. They, we just feel so good when we're around these people. There's something about Includer that's that's just so um, attractive and you just desire to be around it and you feel so seen. And at least that's my experience with, I know Megan and Sarah are, are two uh, women that I know that are high in it. 
Um, so if they're listening, I hope they feel seen and affirmed by this as well. Let's press forward here, folks, um, and, and start pivoting the conversation to a little bit more of the virtuous expressions, okay? So uh, our scripture is always what we look to first to consider how includer or in the talent, any of the, the talents might show up virtuously. Pulled this one from Living in Your Strengths, Catholic edition, right? Reference this one quite a bit in our podcast, but it's Romans 15, verse 7. Welcome one another, then as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. Welcome one another then, as Christ welcomed you for the glory of God. Romans 15, verse 7. So I'd love to open the floor up. How is this hitting you in terms of how Includer might show up virtuously? The piece that stood out for me when I read this was the little ending, for the glory of God, right? We, we spoke a little bit earlier about how Includer, like all of the talents, does better when it's serving something outside. It's not serving, it's like it's not a means, an end in and of itself, but rather it's, it's serving a higher purpose, the glory of God. I mean, all of the talents, when they're oriented toward the glory of God, which can only happen by God's grace, which is amazing here. Um, I mean, that's the fulfillment of, of all of our desires is when it's done for the glory of God, when you're eating the piece of cheesecake for the glory of God, when you are sitting in the hot tub and taking the hot shower for the glory of God, when you are engaged in that conversation for the glory of God, when you are including somebody and making sure their voice is heard for the glory of God, right? All of these things. Joan, I see your hand up. And if you can throw your camera on, that'd be great. But if not, totally understand. We'd love to hear you. Joan, what do you got? I'm sorry, something, um, I can't put it on only because I've got a lot of background going on. You're fine, you're fine. But anyway, um, well, what occurred to me is, and I think this is always the fear of being an includer, I can only speak for myself, I've got it down to 31, is the fear of becoming more like the other, you know, but Jesus was so good at, you know, he would see the person and not the demon operating in the prostitute, or he would see the woman at the well and not all of her husbands and her sins. And he never feared he would become more like them. Mm. Um, if anything, he told them to sin no more. He was asking them to be more like more like himself than him being more like them. So um, I think you have to be really grounded in your faith to be a really good includer. <laughs> Love that. And, yeah, Joan, anyway. that's that's a that's a great reference point that you bring up. Whether there, there's the fear, perhaps, of somebody that's low, and I can I can get this too, where it's just like, okay, I'm gonna catch their, uh, you know, whatever it is that they've got, right? Their, their ideas or sin or whatever it is. Uh, maybe not exactly that thought, but whatever. And, and the, how grounded you need to be in Christ. Like Christ, the cornerstone needs to be just always in your grasp to be able to go and really include all these people without any sort of concern that somehow they're going to, you're going to be manipulated or you're going to be coerced in some way outside of your control. Um, awesome. Joan, thank you for that. Uh, what else? What else we have here, folks? I mean, I certainly see the example that Christ showed here and as Christ welcomed you, and we certainly saw that in our discussion uh, from earlier. Jane, what do you have? Well, you know, just putting this into context about, you know, who was Paul writing to Romans, it was a Christian community, but within in the context of Roman society, where the Roman society just threw out people that were the dregs, you know, again, going back to Mother Teresa and welcoming one another. It's it's really kind of the um for me personally, when I when I when I'm catechizing with young people, I, I'm always telling them like this is really like the revolution that Christ the 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 opposite how he just threw the society on its head in welcoming others that and and how christianity you know for 2000 years has spread and a lot of our mindsets you know the dignity of women um the you know the the dignity of the worker i mean all of these things was christian mindset 
And it really turned the mindset of that Roman culture. And so welcoming one another, I mean, imagine, and and he talks about this a lot, you know, the slave, you know, there's no Jew and there's no Gentile, there's no male and female, there's no Jew, there's no slave or free, such a concept of we're all, we're all equal and dignified in the eyes of God because he created us. When we start from that premise, but I think that's the problem with this whole this whole DEI is that they've forgotten who created us and mm. that because God created us, therefore we have dignity. And we can't, you know, it, it's like this, it, it, you can't go, bef- you can't take the first domino out. And that's what the, the, the problem is. And that's really, again, going back to the Roman society, that's what they, you know, they had multiple gods. And so there was no dignity of the person. It was all society based and, and all of those things. And, and, and they were very cruel. I mean, mm-hmm. so cruel. The crucifixion was so cruel, right? Um, so anyway, that's what I have. Yeah, it's from this foundational dignity that we get things like the university system. Right, the world is is intelligible. It's no, no noble. We get things like the hospital system. Uh, we get the social justice movements that we have. Why? Because Mother Teresa, right? It didn't matter. Everybody has this dignity, and there that dignity is something that is worth upholding. I, I, again, going back to this question of how do we look at the scripture as ways to inform how the person who's high and includer can show up more virtuously. Well, I, I think this this scripture here, welcome one another then as Christ welcomed you. I think also love one another as God loved you, as Christ loved you, as I have loved you, right? And so this as Christ did, as I have, right? Whenever we see Christ doing something, if we want to know the answer, how do we include more people? How do we love one? How do we become more welcoming to more people? I think we enter more deeply into our own experience of being welcomed by Christ enter more deeply into that relationship with Christ and allow yourself to be seen in all of your dignity and be affirmed by the God of the universe in all of your dignity. And as a result, effortlessly, you will see it in the other people that you interact with. And the includer will see it on a 10x level uh, compared to the people like most of us on this podcast that have it in their 30s. Justin, what do you got? I'm just going to say the, I mean, the other thing that really pops out to me, this is the, you know, the, the second great commandment of love your neighbor as yourself. Um, I think that's probably a, something that people with include or probably understand a little bit better than most that um, there, there's nothing after that, <laughs> that period. There, there, there's no follow up. There's no additional clause. There's no, if there's no, but there's just, Love your neighbor as yourself. Um, and I, I really think includers naturally start from that premise mm. um, and move forward where like, you know, a lot of us have to kind of learn it the hard way that, you know, and I think Joan's point was interesting that, you know, well, if I love them, if I interact with them, what if I become like them? And it's, I think includers, it's easier for them to understand more so than maybe the rest of us, that the opposite of that is also true. Well, what if they become more like me? Well, Mm -hmm. the only way that's going to happen is if I bring them in. Got it. Got it. Love it. Yeah. So it's, it's, yeah, first conforming ourselves to Christ. And then it's like St. Paul, like imitate me because I imitate Christ in that. Awesome. Veronica, and then we'll jump to our next slide. Hi. So I was just going to add, um, I love everything that was said. Um, just this idea of sort of focusing on our commonalities. Like I know that a lot of times when we're trying to include people or we're, we're so worried about, you know, offending, or maybe we're going to say something the wrong way, or someone's going to offend us, or I don't know how to show up for something. But I think a lot of that comes from looking at what's different and not what we have in common and so i love what was said about you know looking at um you know the fact that we all desire love we all desire to be seen we all want to have a good job we all want to live in a safe environment like there's just common human needs that we all have and if we focus more on that i think that's um 
a way that we can show up for people. And the other thing that came to me was that I love what you said about includer gathering people like on a broader sense. And I think those of you that have influencing strengths probably really good at that, just sort of being able to like influence and reach more people. Um, and those of us like myself and some of us on the call who might be higher in relator or maybe an individualization, I love this idea that the includer can sort of reach, but then we can kind of really get to know and see people and um, kind of go deeper with them. So like there's a need for both. And so um, I think this idea of welcome, what the Lord is saying is just sort of, you know, be open-minded, see people and focus on the good, focus on what we have in common. So. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, put, put the includers in charge of RCIA, right? Those people that are right on their way into the church, like get them the Sarahs and the Megans and, and put them right at the, at the, uh, at the entrance to the gate of the church. Awesome. Veronica, thanks so much. Okay. As we, as we look at our and kind of start to wrap up here, our conversation, let's look at the virtuous expressions here, how includer might express itself in a virtuous way, right? Something that we want to kind of ascribe to? And then what are the vicious expressions? And we look at this in the context of relationship. So the virtuous expression is going to lead to interdependent relationships versus the vicious side, which goes to independence, dependence, and codependence. All right. Independence, you see yourself, but not really seeing the other person. Dependent, we need the other person to show up and act a certain way in order for us to feel a certain way. And codependent, it's a shallow relationship where nobody is really demanded to grow, right? We're accommodated to be exactly where we are. Um, and usually that's not as good as we could possibly be. Okay. So the virtuous side leads to interdependence. Uh, the includer would, here would create a space for all who are willing to contribute and encourage a receptive attitude towards diversity in the group creates a space for all who are willing to contribute. I think that's important here too, because you, you don't want to force people to contribute. That, that starts getting more of the dependent side, right? Where people are forced to participate, right? Always respecting the other person's freedom. That's, that's a virtuous expression, right? And encourages a receptive attitude towards diversity in the group. So again, what's, what's the ends of this diversity this openness to diverse opinions, to having Hillary Clinton in the room with Mother Teresa, right? It's, it's being able, it's creating the place for us to start to see the similar dignity that's in both of those women, creating the image and likeness of God. Mm, Lord, give me eyes to see, give me a heart that truly desires to see the fullness of people's dignity, regardless of whether or not I personally like them. <laughs> okay. Uh, so th as I'm going through this year, things here, folks, please can, can like ask also how uh, you may have experienced a virtuous expression of this or kind of a, the vicious expression. Just on the independent side, we see it fractures the group. It disrupts the values of the organization. Okay, so this is where it's, I, I think an analogy that I see here is just, might be a little bit triggering, but open borders, right? There's it's it's everybody comes in and it doesn't matter because as it doesn't matter. The the problem with this is it there there isn't we're making inclusion the end, not the means. Okay. And when we start doing this with all the talents, we make them an, an ends, not a means, they start to become self-serving. They, they don't really serve the proper mission of glory of God. That's the best end, serves the glory of God. Okay. Uh, but in this case, that independence, like it's, it's we want to actually, um, we're no longer considering the identity of the group that's welcoming them in. And so the consequences, it's disruptive. It's rough, disruptive to the values of the country, the organization, the group, all right? And those values are what keeps the organization, the country, the group together. What's makes it, it's what gives them an identity. And so the includer isn't like there's there is still like participation guidelines that we give. Yes, you all have 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 equal dignity. Yes, we see that. And this is what it means to be part of the group here, too. So there's a virtuous expression that's there. Leads to dependence forces others to participate against their will. 
Okay. So again, we, if, if we're, if we're acting in our includer so that we can feel a certain way, like we're accomplishing our, our quota, we're meeting our quota, so to speak. And uh, other people don't really want to participate. Okay. It starts to get a little bit self-serving there again. And then finally it leads to codependence. I, I say includes those who support their agenda and reduces the diversity to shallow metrics. I, I think this is our DEI movement right now. I think it's a codependent relationship where people are just seen exactly where they are. And it's not a very deep level. It's a very shallow level. And the shallow identity politics are celebrated, right? Nobody has to grow in virtue. Nobody even, we don't even talk virtue. We don't even talk truth, but nobody's really known which is the sad part of it. We think it's a facade of being known, but it's not really being known. It's a codependent expression of inclusion. And ultimately it's, 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 it's turns on itself. It's, it's exclusive because we're, we're excluding the true depth and the true identity of the person in it. How's this landing here, folks? Like, where can we see, you know, the inclusion going? I've already given some examples there where I think there's this hyper inclusion that's going on, but again, it just doesn't go deep enough. And so therefore it's not really glorifying God. It's glorifying a political agenda or a personal agenda. Any thoughts? Yep. It's a faux inclusion. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. And maybe this is all that needs to be said here. Okay. But again, what does it look like from an interdependent space? We're creating a space for all who are willing to contribute. And then we're encouraging a receptive attitude towards diversity in a group. All right. I think this is image in the story that we shared this morning about Mother Teresa and Hillary Clinton coming together to do something good that was dignifying, ultimately. To like see a common dignity and say, let's start here. It starts to look a little bit like harmony in that sense. But here, in Includer, it's just looking at, seeing the dignity of the person, right? Okay. Some of the mindsets that may be driving some of this. So I look at, how do we, how do we, what's, what are some questions we could ask to drive that virtuous expression? All right. Perhaps something like this. Have we given everyone who wants to participate an opportunity to contribute freely? All right, so that might be something that we ask. Uh, have we weighed the merits of diverse perspectives before making a final judgment? Okay, so again, this is us gathering some input, right? And, and making sure that, that we're, we're not just confining our understanding of dignity to our own soda straw experience, but we're listening to our constituents. I, 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 see, I see, you know, congressional representatives, it'd be nice for them to have, you know, high inclusion not just for the purpose of representing them, but like also for like understanding the dignity of the person so that they can vote to include really the common dignity of the person in ways that uphold the common dignity of the person rather than just what people think that they need. All right, again, we got to go deeper with inclusion and deeper with an understanding of our dignity in order for it to show up virtuously. John Paul II was awesome at that. All right, those vicious mindsets. Everyone being heard is the most important thing. All right, this again, inclusion for the sake of inclusion, uh, celebrating diversity for the sake of diversity. It's like, no, let's go deeper, all right? Forcing participation. Everybody's got to participate. Okay, when you start to force things against people's will, it's going to backfire you uh, on you. And finally, everyone gets a voice, except if they don't like what we have to say. And this is what I think is the great irony of our current DEI movements is there's so much talk about everybody needing to have a voice unless there's disagreement, right? And it's, it, it gets reduced down to certain voices. It's going to stay that way unless we just continue to invite the conversation deeper. Just invite it deeper. Invite the conversation deeper, okay? And, and this is, I think this is, whether you're high in includer or not, this is always the invitation. And you know what? People all desire to be seen. They all desire to be seen. But people also have the, have the ability to choose how they are seen and what, what about themselves that they reveal, okay? 
So that includer is just such a gift of being able to create that space, that judgment-free space for the person to perhaps be seen for the very first time and experience that deep dignity of being seen. I think of uh, the, the, the story that we, we bring up uh, oftentimes, and Christopher West is always telling this one about um, Bishop Nonus, St. Bishop Nonus on, the, on the, the, the steps of the cathedral with his brother bishops as the harlots are being paraded by in the streets. And the brother bishops all turn their eyes away and they look at Bishop Nonus, who's looking intently at one of these prostitutes walking down the street. And they say, Brother Bishop, turn, turn your eyes away lest you fall into sin. And he, he looks at them with tears in his eyes. He goes, can't you see her beauty? I can tell you, I saw it and it delighted me much. And the rest of the story goes on that that prostitute who their eyes connected came and sought him out afterwards and he witnessed the gospel to her and her name is now Saint Pelagia. She actually became a saint right? Through that look of love, through the seeing of the dignity, past the sin. Goodness, can you imagine? Can you imagine a church where we, where we saw one another? This is the gift that you have, people in high includer. And I don't know if our people on our call right now are, are indicative of the, of the lack of includer talent that's high, right? But if you have this includer talent, use it. Use it to truly see the dignity of the person, the only way that you're going to do it is by knowing your own dignity first. And Christ is the only one that can reveal that to you. So that's all we got. I think we'll leave it at that. Um, folks, thanks so much for participating. Everybody here that's on the call is in our Metanoia Catholic Academy. Some of these are uh, coaches that have been certified, that are coaches that are in our certification training. Some of them are just people that enjoy strengths. And so they're on here. They're Catholic. They love their faith. Uh, and they want to know how to live their strengths virtuously. But in the Metanoia Catholic Academy, which you can find at catholiccoaching.com, we do all kinds of things from mindset to understanding our unique design so that we can live that unique design in a way that glorifies God, right? We want to help you discover and live God's unique plan for your life because it is unrepeatable and it is needed. I need it. We need it. The church needs it. And the Lord has chosen you. So join us at catholiccoaching.com, the Metanoia Catholic Academy, and we can go deeper into these things so that you can discover that amazing meaning that comes from living in God's purpose for your life. All right, everybody that's on the call, thanks so much. Tune in next week, like, and subscribe, and we'll see you.